Hey guys, welcome back. As promised, I'm going to show you how to make a blending brush so that you can learn how to blend in some of the videos and tutorials I've shown you before. Um, if you're looking for different sizes, I'm going to show you a couple of different sizes today uh, using just old paint brushes. Now as long as they're round tipped paint brushes, we're good to go. And I'll explain that a little bit better. So if you're looking to make blended backgrounds or blended wings on a butterfly or or if you're just following along with some of my tutorials these are some of my favorite blending brushes that I've kept for as long as I can and they're all inexpensive brushes I don't spend a lot of money on my brushes because I'm actually really rough on them uh, so I'm going to show you how to start with a fresh paintbrush and turn it into one of mine now you can also use uh, sponges or paint pouncers, which I'll leave the link for in uh, the description. And they're just sponges from Martha Stewart uh, to help get blending techniques in. But sometimes you need a really small blending sponge or brush. Uh, so this is where these little brushes come in handy. Now I'm just gonna show you with a smaller one right now. Uh, the type of, don't use flat, don't use flat ones like this, where the metal is pinched, where the bristles are, don't use that. I'm just going to toss that, <laughs> and I'm going to show you what kind to use. They're round, pointed tip. So the, the metal part on your paintbrush is round up at the tip by the hairs, by the bristles. I'm using these really inexpensive CraftSmart uh, paint brushes and they come in a huge package. I'll leave the link for that on Amazon uh, where I purchase them from, but you can probably purchase them at any uh, craft store, Michael's, Joann's, maybe even Walmart. Just make sure that that metal area is round because that's what gives you the best um, blending shape, I guess I can call it. So I'm just going to cut a chunk off of the top. You don't want to take too much off or it's just not going to blend at all really. The hairs flatten out and you're basically using metal on your rock. Uh, so make sure you leave enough there that there's a little bit of bounce to it and, uh, and that'll work awesome. I'm just going to clean up a little bit of my hairy mess here. Uh, so now we have a little uh, blending brush. And this is good for all those little corners that you need to get in or or uh, like for, for little dragonfly spots with the jelly dragonfly tutorial. Um, so here's a bigger one. This is a different brand and I it's covered in paint so I don't even know the brand of it. Uh, but CraftSmart also sells them in a package so that you get all different sizes of these. So as long as the metal part is round and the bristles come out in a round shape and pointed at the tip or just round in general. That's going to give you your best blending brush, in my opinion. This is just me DIYing it up, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't want to go out and buy special stuff, so I create it myself. <laughs> now, I do try and like round out my corners in my bigger ones because or else you get stray hairs that go out and and mess with your blending so just kind of round up the corners if you can or flatten it out as I've done here now I've got two new blending brushes so I'm super excited about that and I've taught you how to do it as well so I'm just going to show you what these new brushes are capable of doing now just like the backgrounds I was showing you already the colorful backgrounds or sunsets you can call them if you're doing a big space, I suggest using sponges, um, but if you're just doing small spaces, these blending brushes come in really handy. So in some of my tutorials, like the Jewel Drop or the Gemstone, uh, or even the Jelly Dragonfly as well, all of these like little spots that you need to get into, these little brushes are so cool. And once you have one, it lasts for quite some time. So as long as you're not too rough with it, it lasts for quite a while. 
and it all just blends together super nice. So the, the bigger brush did the purple, the smaller one did the green. So, so now I can use these two brushes for all sorts of different things. And, uh, and now you get to too. So I'm back with the big brush again and I'm blending in a bigger spot of blue there. It's hard to tell I'm using darker colors, but, um, but they work and I'm excited. And so are they because they're dancing. I hope you love this tutorial. Um, now I've got all sorts of sizes. You can do this to all sorts of sizes of brushes as long as they have that round tip. Um, so as you can see here, I've got like a whole bunch to work with now. I go really small with some of them um, depending on what spaces I'm working with. So good luck to you. I hope this helps you out. A lot of people have been asking. I love you. Have a great time.